Welcome to this service of worship brought to you by First United Methodist Church of Darden Hill. I'm Jim Benford, the pastor of the church, and we invite you to join us for worship together as we invite God's presence with us today. If you are new and have not uh, been in contact with our church before, you may contact us through our webpage at fumcdardenelle.org, or you can call our office on weekdays between 8.30 and 2.30 at 479-229-3720. We invite you to be present for all of our Bible studies, our activities during the week. Uh, we can uh, help you get connected to a Sunday school class or a Bible study uh, that will fit your schedule. We are the people of God, sharing the love of Christ and offering his grace to the world around us. Let us be in the spirit of worship. As we go to God together this morning, let's start with prayer. Father in heaven, as we gather in this place, minister to hearts, minds, and souls. Touch us where we most need it, that we might in all things increase in our wisdom, that we might be filled with the power of your spirit to share the good news and love of Jesus Christ with the world around us. Now minister to us here, we ask in this hour, in Jesus' name, Amen. Like we do on many of our worship services, we'll begin by affirming our faith in God using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead and buried. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's go over some of our prayer concerns. We do keep a prayer list on our website, but I will go quickly over the list of names that has been presented to me. George Parrish, Adeline Hancock, Buster Berryhill, Chris Merritt, William Ellis, Ron Merritt, Barbara Pfeiffer, Pat Crabtree, Dwight Atkinson, Bud Choate, Steve Lawrence, Kathleen Balloon, and of course all of our homebound and nursing home residents. I'm sure that many of you have names that you would like to uh, lift up to God, and so we will in a moment go to God in silent prayer. I ask, as I usually do, that you would uh, be listening as well as God speaks his will and way into our living. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, we give thanks. We have an opportunity today to lift up the names of these that we love so much, who need your healing, your care, 
your surrounding ministry and presence with. We ask that uh, you might minister to each according to their needs. And we also lift up the world around us. There are many who are hurting whose names we do not know today. There is a world filled with war and terror where many people are afflicted and uh, have lost loved ones to uh, the ravages of war. We pray for the plans of those who are evil that they might be frustrated. We pray for the protection and care of those who need it the most. And we pray that we most of all might be involved as being an answer to bring good news and hope and comfort to a world that lacks so much of justice and of righteousness. So help us that we might play our own parts, that we might live according to our callings, that we might listen for your voice and hear your, hear your word. So be with us and be present for our needs, we ask. And we lift up our thanks and praise for your presence and the graces that have already been given us. And so now we join our hearts and minds together in that prayer that Jesus taught his own disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will continue in our worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. If you are joining us by video this morning, you can do that as uh, we have a PayPal tab on our website. And also we will uh, put, uh, as we uh, do the doxology later, uh, an address where you can send uh, your self-addressed stamped envelope if you've received one of those or mail uh, a gift into the church. Just know this, that your gifts make it possible for us to continue to be in ministry to all the world. We give our thanks and our praise for all that God has done and continues to do through the church. And now we offer a prayer of consecration. Let us pray. Father in heaven, from your hand we have received one gift after another, and we stop to count the many blessings that have come to us. So with thankful hearts, we return gifts just as generously we pray as you have given us gifts that your kingdom might come among us that others too might know the hope and glory and the salvation of jesus christ our lord and so we do these things with thankful hearts and pray it in jesus name amen
you'd like to follow along in scripture this morning, we're going to the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses one through six, where we hear good news. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making all things new. And then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal Father, as we study in your word once again, open your scriptures up to us that we might have the same hope that the Apostle John, who saw this vision from you, had as uh, he received it, the wonderment, the amazement, uh, the astounding insights that were given so that we too might have for us open a door of hope for the future. We give our thanks now and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to talk about all things being made new this morning. And what a wonderful thought that the old order of things has been done away with. My goodness. It is so, so many days we wake up with aches or pains or groans or worry or anxiety about what the day will bring for us. And here is a section of scripture that speaks of a time where God's peace washes away all those anxieties and fears, where we dwell and rest secure in God's arms and all things are made right and new again. I'm told that uh, a senior citizen got a brand new Corvette. It was just a toy to him and he pulled it out of the dealership and taken off down the road, he floored it to 80 miles an hour, enjoying the wind blowing through what was left of his hair. Well, you know, it wasn't long before he was pushing it down the I-94, pushing on the pedal even more. Looking in his rear view mirror, he saw that a state trooper was behind him, lights flashing and sirens blazing. Well, on just an impulse, he floored it to 100, then 110, and then 120. Suddenly he thought, what am I doing? I'm too old for this. And he pulled over to await the trooper's arrival. Pulling in behind him, the trooper walked up to the Corvette, looked at his watch and said, sir, I'm gonna tell you, my shift ends in 15 minutes and today is Friday. If you can give me a good reason for speeding that I've never even ever heard of or thought of, I'll let you go. The old gentleman paused, then he looked back up in the trooper's eyes and he said, years ago, my wife ran off with a state trooper and I thought you were bringing her back to me. <laughs> good day, sir. Have a good day, sir, said the trooper. Now, I don't recommend the behavior of the old gentleman in our uh, little bit of humor this morning, but I do recommend new things. Our scripture speaks of the day when God will make all things new again. Can you imagine that? A day where all things are fresh and bright and shiny, just like they've come from the mint. We're tired of the same old things. We're tired of the same old aches and pains. I know this thought can be a little bit disconcerting, but having everything that's our frame of reference for living to be done away with, well, that would just turn our worlds upside down, wouldn't it? Nevertheless, there is good news from God. The things that have plagued us throughout this life Sin, death, all of our enemies, they will be done away with in this wonderful plan that God has for those who are covered by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. 
I want to investigate a few reasons why this news is so good. The first faith lesson is that the former things are going to be done away with. Again, that may be a little disconcerting to think about all the things that we've become accustomed to being done away with, but God has new things for us, things that we scarcely could imagine. You know, let's dig a little deeper into this thought. If you and I were to make a list of the things that we don't like right now, well, I bet we could come up with quite a long list. In fact, when I talk to many of you from day to day, you tell me about this problem or that problem. And uh, folks, how would it be to meet the pastor again and not have any problems? Imagine that. We might come up with some things that are wrong with the world around us. How about pollution, injustice, inconvenience, disease, war? Oh, we could go on and make a long list, couldn't we? Even as grand and glorious as this beautiful world is, sin has entered into it and into the human heart of each and every human being, you and me. As the Apostle Paul has written, For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in the hope that the creation itself would also be set free from its slavery to corruption and into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans. It suffers the pains of childbirth together until even now. And not only this, but we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons and daughters, the redemption of our bodies. Now friends, when the Apostle Paul wrote these words, he was thinking about that kingdom that God had in store for you and me and how good it will be to leave behind the troubles of this life. Perhaps our attachment to the sights and the sounds and things of this world really should be passing away. Now the second faith lesson is that we have been saved into a new life and a new hope. Now we're not saved into a life just like this one where we go on with the same kind of struggles. Uh, that's just one more roll of the dice as to what's coming next. No, when Jesus made a call upon our lives to put our faith and trust in him, well, we've made vows to live not to this world, but to a new kingdom, which we haven't seen with these eyes yet, but that we know by the power of God's spirit working in our own spirits that is around the corner for you and for me. God's Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirits that this is so. We didn't deserve God's loving sacrifice in Jesus. We didn't earn it. We didn't somehow or another save ourselves by our works or our good deeds. Nevertheless, in spite of our sins, it was offered to us by the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross for you and for me. That new life that we receive isn't the kind of life that keeps these bodies from decay and ruin in the here and the now. No, but we look forward to new and glorious bodies in the life that is to come. We have one who has promised and shown us by his resurrection that he is good to his promises, that there is new life and new bodies awaiting us. Just as Jesus was resurrected from the dead as evidence, he gives that as his promise to his followers that his words are always true and his promises are always good. Now I know that's hard for us to understand because we have been without faith at times, but God is always faithful and we can trust God's word. We rely on Jesus' promise also to raise us into new and glorified bodies and into an existence kept by God for his children. Now in so many words, what God has called his children to do is live for him in this transient life and learn how true love ought to be lived with one another and how to grow into wisdom and understanding about the cost of sin in our lives and reject that which is passing away, that which will die and be destroyed. It should be a preparatory time for the full expression of life that God wants to give to his children. By growing in love and faith, and in sharing in the good news of Jesus Christ, of his sacrifice and his offer of salvation from the penalty of sin, we actively seek to live into the life of loving sacrifice that Jesus showed those first disciples. This is 
the way. His word is the truth. He is offering us true and eternal life. In so many ways, we are like the little briar in this story. Now listen. Once there was a briar growing in a ditch, and there came along a gardener with his spade, and he dug around it. He lifted up the briar, and he said to himself, What's he doing? Doesn't he know that I'm a worthless briar? But the gardener took it into his garden and planted it in the midst of his flowers, while the briar said, What a mistake he's made planting me among the beautiful roses. And then the gardener came once more. He made a slit in the briar with a sharp knife, and he grafted it with a rose. And when summer came, lovely roses were blooming on that old briar. And then the gardener said, Your beauty is not due to what you came from, but what I put in you. You catch on to the gist of this story, of course. We have been adopted into God's family, not by our own merit somehow, not by our good works, but by our faith in Jesus Christ. And if we take hold of that which he has planted within us, his spirit, we can shine for God. We can produce new beauty in this world where there are so many briars and thorns. We're not saved by our own working, but by God's amazing grace. And that grace calls us to live in a new way. The last faith lesson is that the old things are being done away. And that is the best news. I don't know about you, but I can certainly witness to you that I live in a constant battle against my human nature. Sin isn't completely dead in me, nor does it give me rest from its constant battle against my soul. As long as I live in this mortal body, there is always going to be an avenue for its constant cravings and its desires to overwhelm me. The hope that's held forward to us in Scripture today is that all things... Even these old bodies of sin will be done away with. They will be refreshed into new and immortal bodies, glorious bodies, where sin will no longer have its sway. These bodies are born to die from the moment that we're precious little babies. It's the nature of this mortal life, and it's the way of joy and great sadness. For we were born not to last in these bodies, but into a more glorious existence kept for us in heaven. However, God knew that creating us this way would be good for us, for we would need to learn to choose good over evil. We would need to learn to love God as God has loved us. Friends, love has been modeled to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And he knew that putting us in these infirm bodies full of desires that it'd be good for us because it would cause us to reckon with what comes next and friends that is a sober contemplation and the consequences that sin sets in motion in our lives in our relationships is a deathly pall thrown over these lives our hope is not that somehow through jesus we will learn perfectly how we should live and love in this life but we are to learn no, our hope is in the God that we call Father who has offered us the gift of eternal life that we might overthrow and outgrow these old mortal and imperfect bodies and go on to greater glory and praise to the God who is the definition of love itself. All of the things that cause death and destruction will be done away with in the new heaven and the new earth that God is establishing for us. And just because we don't see it yet, except through the promises of Scripture, doesn't mean by any means that it doesn't already exist and is waiting for us when these bodies are done. You see, even the physical laws of nature and time will be made new for us who are now so limited. That's what the Scripture mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has been able to imagine the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Thanks be to God. Friends, I want all things to be made new. Don't you? And we don't need to wait any longer for God to act. We can let that process begin. We can start that life eternal. When we accept Jesus Christ into our lives. When we submit ourselves to the one who is love and life and truth. All God wants to know is that we will enter into this new kingdom in Jesus' name that we will be under his authority and that we will live as models of love, 
May we give honor and praise and glory to the one who loved us even while we were yet sinners, proving God's love for us. Thanks be to God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I want to thank you for joining me to uh, investigate just a tiny piece of the great promise that God has for us in Scripture today. I hope that you will join us again in live worship at 1055 on Sundays or come for some of our classes or Bible studies. We want you to live and to grow into God's love along with us. For we have the best news ever that's been given to us. That God sent His only Son into this world out of His great love to redeem us who are imperfect, who are full of sin, and yet God has loved us anyway through Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Mm -hmm.